Hello. This video will try to introduce and explain the different functionalities of SensorTile.box. This is video number two and tells about the so called expert mode. As you know, SensorTile.box has three working modes. The second one, Expert Mode lets the user build some relatively simple programs without writing lines of code, but using a graphical wizard. Creating a new app for SensorTile.box means selecting inputs in blue, functions in green, and outputs. Conditional execution can be considered as a branch of inputs and functions, enabling other branches of inputs and functions. Let's see together examples of this functionality later on during this video. Let's see how to create a new app. The apps we will create in this video are listed here. They have been selected to show almost all the different libraries of functions that have been pre-programmed inside SensorTile.box. This is example number one, Human Activity Study in the Frequency Domain. We will see how to select the input, how to connect the FFT function to its output, and how to see the results on the phone. Let's enter on the Create Apps part of the STBLE Sensor app. Inside the first screen, scrolling it down, you'll see the Expert view in red writing. Selecting it, you will find a new screen, which by selecting New App will bring you to the Graphical Wizard. The first thing the graphical wizard will ask is to select at least one sensor. Let's enter on the Create Apps part of the STBLE Sensor app. Inside the first screen, scrolling it down, you'll see the Expert view in red writing. Selecting it, you will find a new screen which, by selecting New App, will bring you to the graphical wizard. The first thing the graphical wizard will ask is to select at least one sensor. The screen with the functions opens. These are only the functions compatible with the selected inputs, in our case, the accelerometer. Here, for example, we select the FFT and hit Continue in the bottom. Also, functions, as you see, have a property screen. By tapping onto the gear icon, we enter the property editor to select 256 frequency lines and save the configuration. Now it's time to set the third step. That means selecting the output. Let's tap Choose Output. The possible outputs are four. Let's choose Stream to Bluetooth. That means let's see the results in real time with the phone app. We have finished defining the new app. Let's give it a name and hit Finish. This new app now appears in the Custom App screen. The new app can be edited, deleted, or uploaded to SensorTile.box as the ones available in basic mode seen in video number one. Let's take for granted that you are able to upload the app to SensorTile.box. If not, we suggest you have a look at video number one. Let's connect to the box and shake it in different modes to see the frequencies of our movements. Depending on how fast you shake your hand, you'll get different peaks in the graph. The different colors refer to the three axes of the accelerometer. Let's now see another example. In this example, we will program the boxes described here. As for example one, enter the expert mode and select the new app to start the configuration wizard. This time, the input sensor is the magnetometer. Its properties need to be set to high resolution and 50 Hz. Inside the Functions screen this time, you'll find the hard iron compensation. This function is specific for magnetometer and is strongly recommended when using the magnetometer since it reduces the effects of static magnetic fields generated by ferromagnetic objects close to the magnetometer position. Let's create a composed input for the rest of the example by selecting Save as Input on the Output screen. Let's save the app and name it CompMag. Now let's compute the quaternions. Quaternions are the four numbers expressing the absolute orientation of an object in the 3D space. 
To do this, we need to use the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the magnetometer. For the magnetometer, we will use the comp mag just created. Let's tap on New App, select Vibrometer, Gyroscope, and Comp Mag that, as you see, appears in the input screen as an input. Accelerometer and gyroscope properties have to be set to high performance, 52 Hz, and low pass ODR10, high performance, 52 Hz, and low pass 3.9 Hz, respectively. Save the input configuration and go to the Choose Function screen. Here, let's select Sensor Fusion, Quadern Ions, and as output, let's choose Stream to Bluetooth to see the results in real time. Let's save the app and name it Quat, for example. After uploading this new app to the box, as usual, please connect to your device. You will be requested to move the box in a sort of H-shaped trajectory. After that, you will see a dice moving on the screen as you move the box in your hand. This is the best way to show the quadern ions extracted by the magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyroscope raw data. Quadern ions can also be plotted over time and seen in real time, like shown in the slide. Example number three will show other features and options. Let's move step by step. In the first part of this example, we will use the pressure sensor. Let's go and create a new app as done in example one and two. Let's select the pressure sensor and the low power accelerometer. Pressure sensor properties need to be at low noise, 50 Hz ODR and ODR20 low pass filter. Accelerometer properties need instead to be at high performance mode, 50 Hz ODR and no filter. Let's save the configuration. As outputs, let's choose File to SD card and Stream to Bluetooth at the same time. Let's name this example as a &P, for example. By uploading and connecting, you'll see the first screen showing the pressure icon with the pressure number just below. The other sensors are not sending data since not selected in the input screen. Moving the graphical plot window, you will also find the accelerometer data. Please note that during a fall, the acceleration drops to zero on all axes at the same time. Please note that changing orientation of the box, the 1 gram 1000 meg, which is hearth gravity, moves from one axis to another. Please note also that by tapping on the box, the acceleration measured by the three axes changes, and it's different according to which direction your tap comes from. Now let's select the pressure sensor graph. Here you can see the pressure output over time. Please note, moving the box up and down with your arm, that the altitude changes the pressure output, but slightly. In this screen, it's also possible to start and stop data logging. This can be done by hitting the central icon on the bottom menu bar. Let's see in example number four how to detect the free fall and count the number of events. As before, let's create a new app and select the input sensor. It's just an accelerometer. Its properties can be, for example, high performance mode and 50 Hz ODR. Let's save and choose the function. As function, we need a threshold comparison. Let's put 200 milligrams inside the function properties. Let's select another function to be attached after the threshold comparison. This function needs to be the logic not since we want to see when all accelerometer axes are below the level of 200 milligrams. Let me remind you that in freefall conditions, the perceived acceleration because of gravity approximates zero. This app is now saved as EXP. Inside the output properties, so inside the save as EXP, we can enable the user LED. Let's save the app with the name, for example, of Freefall. Now, inside the custom app screen, Freefall is listed and available. Let's select the If button as shown in the slide. 
What are we doing when a freefall condition is detected? Let's count how many times the box is freefalling. So let's select freefall for the Choose an Expression field and for the Choose App to Upload field. Let's select Stream Counter to Bluetooth. Let's upload it to your box. And connect to it after the upload finishes successfully. Selecting Event Counter inside the Select Feature field, with a time scale of 10 seconds, we can now try to drop the box in our hands and notice the green LED blinking and the counter graph on the phone incrementing. The last example we want to show in this video is about orientation change detection. As usual, let's enter to create a new app and select an input sensor. This time it's the gyroscope. Let's put it in low power mode with an ODR of 12.5 Hz. Let's select the function and choose norm, which is the square root of the sum of the squares. Let's also add another function and choose the threshold comparison. The properties of this function need to be set at 100 milledegree per second. As output, let's select Save as EXP and inside its properties. Let's turn on the user LED. Now, save this app with a name. Here, for example, we decided to name it GyroNorm TH. Now let's enable it as in the previous example in the if condition, and let's choose as app to trigger the counter, exactly as we did in example number four. Let's upload the app on the box and overwrite what was stored inside. By connecting to the box, we can select the event counter feature, and this time we will see if we are moving the box slowly or we do not apply any rotations, the LED will not turn on. It will instead when the device is rotated. The counter is also updated when the LED blinks. The following slides are just listing all the inputs and functions that are available inside the sensor tile dot box. It's a sort of reference manual. On the left, you can see the input name. On the center column, the sensor name. And on the right hand column, the functions that can be applied to that input. These are additional virtual inputs that can be used to detect specific conditions to enable specific reactions by the sensor tile dot box. This slide is about functions. It lists what additional function can be eventually connected to the first one in an app. And here we give some brief description of functions and possible outputs that can be connected to them. This chart lists the settings that are possible for the different inputs. And here, the settings that are possible with the different functions. Finally, the output settings. Thanks for following the video up to the end. Sensor Tile dot box lessons will continue with the next video about the pro mode of operations. Stay tuned.